Listener audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce, not Dr. Drew. Dr. Bruce is uh, filling in for Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is in uh, Boston, following his uh, little girl's uh, ice dreams around. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Bruce. A board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, does emergency medicine, could uh, remove a a tat with his laser, yes, from from inmates? No longer. No, you don't go to the the prisons anymore and do that? No. Okay, good. Okay, I'm just I'm trying to gauge how the show's going to go tonight, and I can see it's going to be a long night for me. Justin Long is uh, here tonight. Oh boy, I'm not going to help you out, Justin. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Here's here's all I need to know. I just that, that that's my little test with Bruce, and now I know what the answer is. I like the tattoo bit. I'm going to be. Yeah, uh, we, we worked it all out. Uh, Justin is from uh, Dodgeball, the new movie which uh, came out on Friday and was uh, last Friday and was uh, number one, and. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. I was surprised because it seemed. It seemed as quirky an idea for a comedy as I've uh, seen in a while. But it got great reviews, by the way, from everyone who's seen it. And then uh, uh, Ebert and Roper or Siskel or whatever the the one who's alive but still had a stroke. Yeah, just, and yeah. and the new one, uh, two big thumbs up. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that. Should be- yes. <laughs> Yes. Correct. <laughs> no, no, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce nods. I did, Good radio. Yeah, I did. You open your mouth and something came out. Is you're way ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it was we, a surprise to be getting those reviews. We sort of went into it knowing that we were making, uh, you know, like a ideally like a stripes type or you right. know meatballs, which is one of my favorite movies uh, growing up. Um, and I think I, we're just sort of surprised that the critics have kind of. Uh, agreed that you know that it was it was worthy a worthy successor to those movies. What was your first reaction when somebody handed you a script with dodgeball? Was that well, like, oh it was called Underdogs originally, so I didn't have that reaction. Had it been called Dodgeball, I'll tell you, I probably would have said Dodgeball, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I my first reaction to the script was. Uh, but I, I, the part had been written for me, which was the most flattering thing in the world. Never happened before. Probably after this movie will never happen again. Uh, and, and and of course, I flipped right to the part where my character was being described, and it said, "Same name as me, Justin Redmond, fifteen, skinny, gaunt, awkward, like every adjective right. you could, like halitosis, <laughs> like tiny." Peanut, like just <laughs> this, the worst description for a human being, yeah. like receding hairline, like yep. no chin. Uh, and I was like, yeah, you take the good with the bad, I guess. <laughs> and so uh, the, the writer of the movie, who was, I don't know who, Ross and Marshall Thurber, the S- Supreme Court Justice, knew, uh, knew your work from Ed or from uh, yeah. other, other uh, theatrical releases? <laughs> um, he was a huge Crossroads fan. No, he he, he yeah, I guess loved Ed and and Galaxy Quest. He was a big he's a big fan. Oh, of Galaxy yeah. Quest. And, Galaxy uh, Quest, uh, by the way, uh, one of those uh, movies that every time you bring it up, people almost defend it unnecessarily. Like people yeah. go, "Yeah, it was Galaxy. Yeah, that was good. That was not so that bad. Was good. Yeah, that was a good. No, have you seen it? Yeah. Right? It's like, yeah, I liked it too. Well, you better like it. Like they're like, they're like yeah, I know. I thought it was good. I, I it was good. People get it, yeah. almost like uh, they're they're ready for a fight with yeah. uh, Galaxy Quest because it was like this Tim Allen, uh, Kirstie Alley, it's Sigourney, we- yeah. Sigourney Weaver movie. <laughs> it's close, and they thought <laughs> it was close when it came out. Now it's yeah. very different. <laughs> but uh, there's like uh, six Sigourney Weavers for every one Kirstie Alley now. <laughs> but this was back in the day when they were you know neck and neck. Uh, it was it was a movie that people sort of thought like, eh. and then it was, eh, but it was really interesting idea. Yeah, well, it was, it was they marketed it weird. I remember they were like a goofy Tim Allen kind, you know, yeah, it wasn't like yeah, people thought it was like Spaceballs, yeah, or something, yeah, yeah, and it was really a, a clever idea that was uh, well executed, and that's why people get really weird and defensive uh, when you bring it up. People people thought uh, <laughs> I, this guy I, this guy. Ran into a guy the other day who was like, I saw Dodgeball, like, real nerd, like, Star Trek type guy. And he's like, I uh, love the Galaxy Quest reference. And I was like, uh, what? I, I'm sorry, I don't even know. He's like, come on, when you bump. And I, I guess I have a moment in Dodgeball where I bump into William Shatner. And my character in, in Galaxy Quest was obsessed with a William Shatner type 
Tim Allen was playing basically right. William Shatner. And, uh, and I said, God, you know, I hadn't even thought of that. He's like, come on. All right. He was like winking at me. And do you, do you, uh, you think the writer had that in mind? May, who knows? Maybe he's, Ross is sort of like a frat nerd. It's like a strange hybrid of like, uh, you know, like, kind of like a jockey type frat guy, but also with definite like geeky sensibilities, you know. I, I like to sit down. I was talking to someone, uh, earlier this week about all the stuff you don't know that you never put together. Like, Arby's, uh, the uh, restaurant, roast beef. The, you know what I'm saying? R and B oh. for uh, roast beef. And this that... all, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the R B is for uh, is for roast beef. It, just the stuff you never put together, like the movie uh, Raising Helen. It, it didn't strike me the Raising Hell part of it. It wasn't ironic. It wasn't. I thought her name was just Helen, and they were <laughs> raising Helen. It could have been raising Trisha. It would have made would have made as much sense or the same to me. What, I didn't even was put Helen it together. Kate Hudson. Yeah, oh. yeah, and I, I'm guessing that the the title was supposed to be ironic or funny or cute by raising hell, raising oh, hell, and yeah. you didn't think of that either. Yeah. Someone else said to me, "No, of course that's what they did," and I was like, "I never, never put it together." I would like a uh, list of like the top five of those things that nobody puts together, and the, the thing is, is they're all different for all of us. There must be a book out there someone's written. Yeah. Well, if not, <laughs> I'll find it. Yeah. Why don't you work, work on that on now? I'll work on it right no, now. Right I'll head now. Out the door. <laughs> right now. All right. Let's. Uh, Unless I say this. Let's. <laughs> let's get to the phones. Jade. Hi. Jade. Hi. I like the name. Jade. Adam. Sixteen. What's going on? Um, I was wondering if you, because you know how you can get a high from like smoking weed, like a contact high. Well, how you can? Well, how you can get a contact high if someone around you is smoking weed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if you can get that same kind of high if someone's smoking, like, crystal in the room with you, even if you're not smoking it. Yeah, well, I, you know, whenever someone is getting high around you, even if you're watching a movie, like rent the movie The Doors, and you see <laughs> Val Kimmler getting all effed up, you'll start feeling kind of groovy and psychedelic, too, just by being in the presence of someone's getting effed up. Because what, my I mean, what about what they're blowing out of their mouth? I mean, what about the smoke part? Yes. I don't know. She was sitting there and she was doing it, and me and my other friend were on the bed, and then I couldn't sleep for like a day and a half after that. Okay. Well, and I didn't know what was going on. So you're smoking it out of like a light bulb or some sort of a pipe or what? How I wasn't. I didn't touch it. Was I was she on smoking? the bed, and I don't. I didn't even see what she was smoking it out of. All right. Okay. You're but, fine. You're fine, but it's it is possible. It depends on the ventilation in the room, how small the room is. Yeah, it was kind because of a small room. Methamphetamine crystal, the uh, vapors uh, given off from that are very well absorbed across any mucous membrane. Really? Oh yeah. All right. With with methamphetamine, actually, with co cocaine, you have to take the the stuff people snort and change it into a base. Into but that, that's why, like with cocaine, you can go for like the freeze. You just put it on your gums, you can feel it, right? Or you put a little on the door. Well, if it's you a local last anesthetic, longer. so you can so yeah. you feel. But with methamphetamine, you don't have to change it into a, into from the salt to the base. Uh, the way with cocaine, you, if you right. smoke the stuff that people snort, you destroy right. it. You have to. You have to change it. it, right? Right. With methamphetamine, it's uh, either way. You can this. You don't have to do any chemical changes to it. But what she's describing. I used the mic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what Jade's describing is yeah is possible. Right. Okay. Thank you. Time on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what? Possibly last. Go ahead. All right. Thank yes, you, Adam. I love you. No, listen, Jade. I, Bruce is trying to give you an answer. No, Here's I know. The thing. Why I... are you hanging out with people that are smoking meth? I didn't know she was going to. She, like, brought these people in her room. We thought it was just being, like, a three-girl sleepover. Mm -hmm. And she brought these two guys in her room, and me and my other friend are like, oh, my God. And and what happened? Did you guys make out or anything? <laughs> were they pillow fighting, but not like you want to hurt each other? No, we were laying on the bed watching School of Rock. <laughs> And and these guys were hanging around just uh, sparking up the meth pipe, and uh, we were just watching <laughs> yeah. Jack Black do his thing with the kitties. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like, sounds like I was freaked out. I haven't talked to her since. I don't even want to look at her. She's like, ew, to me. All right. And this was a good friend of yours? Yeah. Wow. And now she's ew? Yeah, she's so ew. Wow. Have, have you told her your feelings about... About that? No, I don't. E I guess I'm probably going to see her tomorrow, and I'm going to tell her because that's not right. If she wants to do that, I really. She's the type of person. She's going to do whatever she wants, but I don't know. That's not who I want to be around. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, in the background. 
All right. Well, look. That, if, Is that a crack baby in the background? You shouldn't. It, it, here's the whole thing: the slumber parties should not involve meth. They should yeah. have. Uh, they should have like s'mores, <laughs> and maybe like a Mickey's Big Mouth. And guys who ride up on motor Harleys with uh, crack pipes or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, huh? rough sex? I hate talking to guys. <laughs> no, I mean, Justin, I, I love. Like Just because like I'm a brother. Slightly effeminate. But, slightly. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> it's like, Justin, what kind of name is that for a chick? Hello. Huh? No. Uh, Have you seen Assassins? <laughs> Sorry. Christy, we can, uh, oh, oh, oh. Bleeding anally for over a year. That I want to get into. Yeah, this. Just for me, Adam, just for me. All right, Christy? Yeah. You're 23? Yeah. Oh, yeah. She sounds like she's the opposite been... of the other caller. We're having extremes. What's happening, what? baby doll? Anal bleeding for uh, over a year. Yeah, it's been off and on for like a year. And I went to the doctor, and he pretty much told me that the only thing he could think of was colon cancer. So they did a colonoscopy, and he didn't find anything. Mm -hmm. You're 23. Some... Wait a second. You're 23, and you have blood anally, and the first thing you thought about was cancer. Sound like. Sounds yeah. like he needed some more business that month. The, the most common thing is an anal fissure or hemorrhoids. I mean, especially at your age. I mean, you certainly right. want to check. Was was this bright red blood or was this occult blood? The blood that you have to test for in the mm. stool. It was bright red. Bright red. Mm. Mm. Now, what's the difference between the stuff that's in the stool and the stuff that's on the toilet paper? Well, the stuff on the toilet paper is local. I mean, it's where you're. Yeah, yeah. It's so there. the. the that's the not stuff cancer. you're testing for in the stool. Well, it can be. I've but had patients that you have most likely. If you have a colon cancer, the right. blood is being released further back, and it's mixing in uh, with the stool. It's dark by the time, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, that's right. It's, it's, the very... it's the difference between the actual uh, soft swirl ice cream and the colorful <laughs> Jimmy's on top. <laughs> great, that's great. The, the Jimmy's on top would would be the fissures, would be the uh, hemorrhoids. And the soft swirl itself might be the uh, the cancer and the colon cancer. Ah, that's a profound kind of analogy. Yeah. I, I like I like my ice cream with peanuts. <laughs> very powerful. Which I guess it still it still it works. Still works. <laughs> it still works. Yeah, peanut M and M's are especially good. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what, getting back to Christie's. Yeah. So Christy. So I'm yeah. sure he didn't say the only thing he could think of was a colon cancer. He said that I could have polyps, but they did a colonoscopy and they didn't find anything like that. Well, do you have a, you know, if you had a family history or there are certain genetic disorders that might predispose you to, to cancers that would make them suspicious, but a normal 23-year-old with bright red blood, you certainly want to uh, yeah. check, but it's not the first thing you this think This is of. the bright red blood. This is, yeah. right? Yeah, it's bright red blood, and it's not even mixed in with my stool. Right. Right. All right. But she said her doctor told her this was the first the first thing he said was it was like, like sometimes doctor's Woody Allen yeah <laughs> gotta well, be a tumor <laughs> yeah a, a doctor does not want to miss a colon cancer and with patients that are young and tend to write things off they want to impress upon them the fact that that's something that's that you need to right. consider in the differential diagnosis. all right so but he he so checked. He's checked her out so all right what's you, the you question got a clean bill of health right are you still yeah. concerned or you worried or yeah I'm really worried okay I mean, let me put your mind at ease. If you had a colonoscopy, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. An anal fissure, it's like a crack, so to speak, in this... Stay in the ice cream store. Oh, in the ice cream store. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, the cone is... Uh, It'd be like a waffle cone with a it's crack It's like a waffle it. cone, right, with a crack in it. And yeah. But it's further up. It's a, where you can't see. And by the way, who, who's... Uh, you know, they, do, they, they would always do this. You want the sugar cone or you want the waffle cone? And the one was that uh, sort of stale, dried up sort of hollow one, and the other was a delightful one. Right. Whose uh, self-esteem is so low that they go with the waffle? Do you wow. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or the, the weird stamped one that's uh, stacked and everything? It, 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 we used to get it at Thrifty's and at Save On. It was the crappy cone. It was the, the far less superior of the two cones. But yet they gave you a choice. So people that would choose that would have a lower self-esteem. I would say they would either be stupid or have a lower self-esteem. Like the person that lets the smoke alarm. Yeah. Continue to beat. I, I, That's right. You're talking about. I'm still with yes. the, with the, with the colon analogy, and I'm trying to oh, figure sorry. out the sugar and the waffle cone. I feel like I have a waffle cone ass. But I, I, I used to I used to work at Carvel, and they would make us push the the waffle. Carvel. Carvel. Yeah. They would make you push the the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Waffle cones out of our ass, which was. Uh, 
they would make they, like they would they, they didn't want us giving out the sugar cones. Right, they pushed a waffle cone yeah. because it's stale. First off, waffle yeah. cone at shelf life of seventy years. Number one, <laughs> number two, I'm sure is imported from uh, some uh, third world country somewhere and just some slow boat from somewhere, and it clearly couldn't be as expensive as the uh, sugar cone. And and so so how but how do you push it? Well, they they would just they would tell us to avoid the sugar. If the sugar cone came up, we would begrudgingly have to. We, I think I think I remember they were like, well, yeah, we would have to say like you know the soft serve doesn't stay in the cone as well, but it's your choice. Yeah, and kind of make it like like that. Plus, I would I would bet. That mm, eight times out of ten, if you said uh, sugar cone or waffle cone, and the guy said sugar cone, you could just serve it up in a waffle cone and hand they it. They would have no idea. You know, yeah. They wouldn't say anything. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would just yeah. be angry. I would seethe all the way home. I would be passive aggressive and yeah. be like, oh, nice, nice sugar cone. Yeah. Kind of roll my eyes. Really going to enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. That's what I would do. And I'd be so angry the ice cream would melt in my hand because it would be hot. <laughs> and I, that's time I checked, vanilla wasn't brown. Yeah. But thanks a lot, yeah. Jackass. Yeah, this is a great Saturday Night Live skit, like passive aggressive uh, Carvel patron. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's melting. Yeah. I didn't order it on my hand. Right. But thanks. Yeah, I asked for the brown Jimmy's, not not the colored ones. Right. That's That was me. That's, that's what I did. Yeah. If we looked at the security footage, you would see that I, I said that. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> That's right. So, all right, go ahead. So, it's a sugar cone. <laughs> it's a sugar cone. <laughs> We're talking about asses. Right. And the defect yeah. through which the blood is mm -hmm. traversing is mm -hmm. further up than one can see. So uh -huh. So you can't see anything. Right. But yet, it's a hemorrhoid. Not, a, not a cancer. You can have an internal hemorrhoid. So, that's a, that's a fissure? Right. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, Christy, it's good times. Well, listen, <laughs> baby, you'll land on your feet. Your doctor, what are you depressed overall? Not really. I'm just really worried about it. Cause yeah, but what, why so worried? You went to your doctor, he gave you the colonoscopy, and you checked out. I don't know. <laughs> I don't she know. sounds all good. So much the doctors screw up, and yeah. Well, well, here's a here's the thing. What else is going on in your life? Where do you work? Um, right now, I'm not working. Oh, not out, uh, unemployed. I'm staying at home with my daughter. All right. Where's uh, you have a husband, boyfriend? Yeah, I have a husband. You do. What's the matter yeah. with him? You angry at him? What? Are you angry at him? No, I'm not angry at him. But uh, not a great guy. Um, he, he's a really nice guy. Uh -oh. Not Sounds used like to being treated are... that good, I guess. What's What's Fishing. not that good? Deeply in there. I'm not used to being treated as good as he treats me. I guess I don't know. Oh really? Oh, you can't tolerate it. Yeah, he had a bad dad. Your dad was an a-hole. Now this guy's um, treating you good. My dad and you're was freaking never out. around. Your dad was never around. No. He was a good humor man. <laughs> He's constantly on the run. All right, I'm trying to keep I'm trying yeah. to keep the ice cream theme going. Yes. Summer, you know, first day of summer, Monday. Uh, trying to keep trying to weave it in. Uh, Program director said, "Keep weaving summer in." <laughs> That's what people want to hear. <laughs> yeah. He said, uh, "Program director Paulie says that people are uh, retired of talking about uh, AIDS and uh, cancer and uh, HPV and all this stuff. Try to weave ice cream into the call, but don't change the content of the show." <laughs> so I'm going with the summer theme. That sounds like a program director, <laughs> Christy. Yeah. All right, baby. Here's the thing: you're depressed. It's 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 not the it's not the ass uh, that's uh, but uh, at the top. Of uh, your legs, it's the ass that's on your shoulders that's messed up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's the one that needs the enema. You see what I mean? You're depressed, and you're gonna freak your kid out. You're all worried, and and uh, you're angry, and you're depressed, and your kid's gonna get depressed. Nothing worse than depressed mama. All right? How about a little therapy? I'm not depressed. Uh, all right, I don't good. think she's have, buying your have, diagnosis. Right, have, so have yeah. fun ruining your kid, then, would you? <laughs> So Enjoy. She doesn't sound depressed at all. I gotta say, she sounds. She's a delight. I know. She's she sounds a like a delight. It she sounds, sounds irritated. Like I'm not depressed she at all. Sounds irritated with your analogy. No. Where so, stop talking no, about no, ice wait, cream? I'm not done. I'm with lactose Christy. intolerant. Where? When's the last time you saw your dad? Oh, geez, it's been like five years. All right, hold on one second. Let me just tell you the number. Okay, I'll tell. You, I'll tell you first off how, how I know people are angry. I get angry at them. 
If I get angry, that means they're angry, number one. Number two, I've been doing the show for nine years. Here's what people do who are angry. They give a two count before every huh. answer, mm-hmm. and, right. it, and, it, and it you starts pissing you off. But it's just it's not huh. enough for you to say anything about it. It's just, uh, how, uh, so how old are you when you moved out of the house? One, one thousand, two, seventeen. Well, it's nah, just, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a little, it's a huh. little like, eh, eh, eh. It, like they don't want to go, what does a four count mean? It, it's, it's a, uh, four count means I hang up on your three. <laughs> pot smoke. We never <laughs> get to it. Pot no, smokers pot do that smoking. too. Well, it's, it's angry. She's a pot smoker. Chris, she's angry. You don't smoke pot. She's not a pot smoker. No, I'm not saying she is, but. Chris, do you smoke <clears throat> pot? Yeah. Uh-oh. I told you. <laughs> Score. <laughs> How much pot do you smoke? Um, not very much. Okay, so uh, your husband, what does he do for a living? He's a construction worker. Yeah, see. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. All oh. right, and he treats you right, but uh, you're having difficulty with it. What's wrong with a guy who treats you too good? And what do you mean he treats you too good? Nothing. I've just had really bad boyfriends in the past, and it's just really weird to have a good one. Right. And so now this is going to be tough, this intimacy, because you're, you're used to a little chaos. And you're going you're gonna to inject some chaos into this relationship. You're going to cheat on him. You're going to start trouble with him. You're going to agitate him. You're going to shake him up. You're going to get him to a point where he starts yelling at you or throws something at you because that's what you know. Christy. Yes. You called with a question about rectal bleeding, and you're actually you're getting actually good advice from Adam, but some Thank of his humor is a little bit raw or, no, or difficult. I'm not, to, I'm not, speaking not, of I'm rectal not, bleeding, I'm, I'm not being I'm not being funny. You're angry, and you're going to screw up your kid, and you can't tolerate this relationship, and you're going to screw this thing up. <laughs> right, but if a you're, therapist started the analogy with the ass, not how, the ass on get your some bottom, therapy. but the ass on your shoulders, I think that might have get some right. therapy. All right. Your relationship is like a dip cone. She's so angry. Where <laughs> it'll harden very quickly. That's right. Where's your dad? What? Where's your dad? When's the last time I you talked know. to him? I have no idea. He he abandoned the family? Um, he's pretty much a crackhead and has more fun with people my age than I do. All right, hold on a second. Hmm. No anger issues? Everybody's, oh, I think you're absolutely cool. right. But I think until somebody asks the question themselves and is interested in hearing, I'm, uh, all right, she doesn't I, what, what am I going to do, call her back every two days and see if she's ready to see the, <laughs> no. see the light? i got ten seconds. I'm going to yell at her, and that's yet. Yeah. Listen, Christy, I say this with the great love. I really do. You're, you're an angry person. You have the right to be angry. Your dad's a crackhead who abandoned the family. You have, and I wouldn't care what you did. If you didn't have kids, who cares? But you have kids, and, right. and maybe you're going to have more. you got to get some therapy and work this out, all right? Okay. All right, just take care of yourself, and then you'll be a good mom. And you won't drive this good guy away, by the way, which you will do soon, believe me, unless you get a little therapy. All right. Oh, her dad's a crackhead. Right. I, I think you're absolutely right, but I don't think she is conceptualizing no. what you're... No, she's not. I don't think she understands. But look, it, it, it's it's I got to tell people what the truth is, and then if if they want to ingest it, that's their business. Uh, well, the, the fact that they don't have that ability is not going to stop me from delivering the message. Absolutely, I, I'm just not sure. I've seen you go from a, a physical complaint call <laughs> jumping over into the well, but it was the family, hesitation the thing that was history. going. Well, uh, yeah, no, it's I knew what I knew what's going on. She's <laughs> she's focusing on on her ass yeah. when it's that's not the point. And when she brings the kid up, she's going to screw the kid up. Yeah, I think you're And right. I can hear by the tone and, and her cadence that she's angry. Yeah. All right. I think you're both wrong. <laughs> Justin Long <laughs> is uh, here. Speaking he, of anal bleeding. Yeah. You want to you laugh so hard your ass will bleed? You watch that dodgeball. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. We will uh, take ourselves a uh, little break. We'll be right back after this. Yeah, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce is filling in for Dr. Drew and doing a fantastic job. Fantastic. Justin Long is uh, here tonight from Dodgeball. Number one at the box office uh, last week. Thank you. And uh, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. And, and yeah, despite Spider-Man 2's... No, no. That's uh, nothing. <laughs> they got lucky. <laughs> I, I, and, and let's just call it what it was. It was luck, the last Spider-Man. Right. Pure they, and simple. There was nothing else coming out around that time. Right. It was a little feel-good indie. Yeah. One hit wonder, yeah. like uh, Chumba Wumba, mm-hmm. that yeah. tub-thumping song. They, they, they've, they've come out with albums since then. 
we're not buying. Not so bad, actually. I don't I'm uh, gonna refute I, that analogy. I don't. I don't. Well, they, yeah, but they just got the one hit. They got the one hit. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, this Spider-Man movie may be good, may not. No one's going to see. No one's ever going to find out. We, we already, already know what. Kid. We already know what happens. We know we that Tobey Maguire is Spider-Man. Yeah, we get it. We get it. You, you shoot, you shoot. Uh, webs yeah. from your wrist. Okay. All right. right. We saw it before. The kids <laughs> all that. The kids no. all fought. No, no, they, they've had enough. They've had enough of Spider-Man. They're not interested anymore. They've moved on. So, now that that now that we've Thanks, uh, rationalized that away, who's next? <laughs> white chicks? St uh, white not chicks look hilarious. Not going to work. Now, people not interested. In is it me or do they look monstrous? I mean, like, I saw that trait. They look like monsters. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, hey, look, we can uh, we can put a man on the, on, on the moon, but we can't make a 6'3 <laughs> black guy look like a hot blonde. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Six hours in the makeup chair every day? I say she should have spent seven. <laughs> I just like, uh, I was talking about this earlier in the week, how you get superhuman strength when you're a man posing as a woman. Like right. When you sock a guy, he goes flying 20 feet in the air and lands on top of a building. It's like, uh, Marlon Wayne's 145 pounds. Uh, if he socks a guy, the guy does not physically lift off of the ground yeah. and go sailing into the side yeah. of a building. <laughs> Now, if he's wearing his street clothes as a guy, it's not going to do anything. But you put the heels and the kissing potion on, all of a sudden, superhuman strength. Yeah. They never are like they do that. They always do that. The chick move too. Like the ball goes rolling over to the person. Hey, little help! They pick it up. They throw it. The guy goes sailing into the backstop. It's like, how did you become so strong? All I hate of a those sudden? movies. Yeah, I think I you're referring to Christine Taylor and Dodgeball. Not. Oh, really? <laughs> That's exactly what happens. I'm watching. I'm watching Dodge. I'm seeing Dodgeball this weekend. I'm going. I, I got to tell you. Here's what happened. I was I went and saw the movies uh, this weekend, and I always go to that arc light because uh, they got the caramel corn there. Mm. They give you a sign seating, mm. and they take care of. Had some bitch ask me to take off my baseball hat. It was behind <laughs> me, by the way. Really? Let me explain. Yeah, let me just show you something. This is you know this is that uh, fifty something year old women woman who just uh, these they, they walk around with their head on a swivel, complaining about yeah. everything constantly. Tremendously repressed. These are the people. Yeah, these are the women who. Uh, you know, you see them walking their dog up in the hills, and you drive by at 18 miles an hour in your car, and they give you that look right. like a your right. maniac right. who's a, who's escaped. <laughs> you've like you've jumped the wall at the institution. You've commandeered a vehicle. It's like, oh, how do you know what? It's like, yeah, I'm I, I, I'm driving home. Do you mind? Do you mind? Oh, oh, oh. It's like. What do you want me to do? Get out of my car and start pushing as I pass you? Or, or stop and put some cones up or something? I've slowed down. I'm going back. It, it's just these women, you know, they're in a sort of constant state of, uh, they look like they just bit into a lemon that's yeah. all crapped in. And they're just sort of, they're just sort of got that, huh? Just and I sat, perpetually malcontent. I sat down in front of her. She was, she was seated before me. And I sat down in front of her because it's assigned seating. Mm -hmm. And I hear that. Shh. Like, she's so disappointed. I'm like, well, I, it's, it's, you know, 33J. That's my seat. It's like an airline when you go to the arc light. They just sit you Were in. Were you wearing one of those, like, Dr. Seuss hats? What? I, I, I was wearing uh, one of the hats that the uh, guards wore to uh, protect the uh, witch's <laughs> castle uh, uh, on Wizard of Oz. The o -E -O. Yeah, a big, huge Ooh. fur beef eater. Yeah. No, I, I was no, I was wearing I was wearing this baseball hat, and let me let me just show you. I'm just going to do some some head circumference math with you. This is me with the hat on. By by the way, eh, three sixteenths of an inch above the skull. Uh, this is me with the hat off. The hair's actually yeah, it is. I was going to say you, you should have... you should be asked me to put a hat on yeah. when you sit right. behind me. I have the Brillo hat, yeah. and she's directly behind me now. The bill ain't tipped up like Gomer Pyle. It's just here's the hat. It's exactly how I'm wearing it. You didn't she's have one of those twirling beans. No wind up. I I snapped it off because. Uh, <laughs> It hits the door jams. They're loaded. <laughs> so the, the point is, is she's like, uh, excuse, excuse, could you take your hat? Like, uh, first off, listen, sweetie, Pete, do do the math. There's less, there's That's less awesome. head with the hat on. This is essentially a shower cap. <laughs> I could pull it off and uh, look like um, like a Bernie from Room Two Twenty Two. It's an old reference, but the guy had big red, big red, a big red fro. Hey, right, so what did you do? What did you do? Yeah. She uh, she moved after I took the hat off, and then <laughs> that's awesome. Then it was one of those. 
can I put the hat back on? <laughs> I was thinking to myself, like, she's moving. And, you know, again, again with the, she's one of these women who's like a constant uh, escaping of air. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> so put upon. So right. put upon. So irritating. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh. Okay, uh, and it's like the the way the arc light is. By the way, it's 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 it's, Such it's, great seats. it's like it's like a football save. It's yeah. like a steep rake on him, and my head's like a full foot below yeah. her chin. But when you I'm took saying. the hat off, she probably really couldn't see. Yeah, she's like, the fro had <sighs> popped up. And, uh, it's like these yeah, are these people where like uh, oh, I'm uh, I'm sorry I was born. Would you like me to jump back up, my mom? <laughs> I'll get her. But can you imagine that, 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 that was your I can mother. stuff myself back in my uh, mother's that vagina. Was, uh, like that raising children. I've oh. known people. I uh, grew up in Connecticut. Uh, I, I know those uh, people all too well. Uh, do you have to sit in your science seat? Uh, listen. Look, you want, look, listen, Elvis. Why don't you buy out the movie theater then? Or shut the hell up. I'm sure she's playing about the prices. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, anal bleeding, probably. Anal bleeding. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get back to the phones. Kevin? Yeah? 17? Hi, guys. Thanks for What's taking up? my call. Justin, uh, Kevin was awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks a lot. You saw it over the weekend, Kevin? Huh? You saw it yeah, over, the saw over the weekend? Oh, right on. Funny, okay. right? Huh? Funny, funny. Very funny. You laugh till your ass bled. I did. True. Um, so, Adam, you are a genius. You oh, and Drew have uh, really raised me uh, better than my own parents, I dare say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. My question is about um, the girl I'm currently dating. Mm -hmm. um, we've been dating for six months. Um, we've been having sex for the last two. Um, oh, yeah. like, Congratulations, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, and at first she was just like sort of aggressive, like biting and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But recently she's been asking me to like hit her and to hold mm -hmm. her down and stuff mm -hmm. and like hold pillows over her head. And I was just wondering if like mm -hmm. I should indulge that. Mm -hmm. Is this your first girlfriend? Uh, no, mean, I've first had other girlfriends. You're... This is the first girl I've had sex with, though. Yeah. Because I could hear that because you got that sort of transitional virginal voice. Like I've, I've, I guess. I've, Thank you. Uh, Very good. I pop my cherry, <laughs> but good. not not many times. A voice I hope to have in a few years. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, by the way, I haven't asked, but um, we can ask uh, Justin. The uh, is the behimen intact? <laughs> the behimen? Yeah. That's, what? Uh, God, I wish I sort of the male hymen. Oh, the taint. Yeah, well, it's the behind me. Oh, it's I mean, it, it's it, <laughs> has it been broken? Is it in good shape? Uh, I'm <laughs> Hollywood can be a difficult town. The manginas? Yeah, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I can just see out one. Like, I wrote this script with you in mind, Justin. Justin grabbed it, and the guy just hung on it and pulled it back to him slowly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how the behind it gets um, broken. Uh, okay. You Directed know. by the guy from Sons of the Lambs. All right, so, so Kevin, this yeah. is here's what this is. Uh, she uh, could have been a little... Now, here, here's the thing. All women... No. Most women like a little what we uh, call rough trade. <laughs> uh, they like uh, just, you know, they like a little tap on the ass. They like a little uh, who's your daddy. A little. Most women. Right. Most women. Natural. But when it crosses the point where you're having to smother them Near with, with the pillow, right. uh, then that usually means <clears throat> there's something up. So the question... Uh, I would have for you is what's up? Is she did she come from an um, abusive background or anything? Yeah, see, I've I've listened regularly, so I've been watching out for that. Um, her mom seems relatively normal. Um, I never see her dad around. Um, mm -hmm. She doesn't really like to talk about it. I mean, that's, that's a good. I, sign. I mean, I've never seen him before, but right. I hear he's present, but he's not really. You know, like I'm around a lot. And well, their mom and dad are together, or they're divorced. Uh, no, they're together. Together, and he's just not around that much. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here's the thing. It's it's all it's all about wherever that line is. Like I said, if she likes right. a little slap on the ass, fine. But yeah, it sounds like she wants want to punch her baseball bat and the asphyxiation. Yeah. Right. Do you, so what's Kevin? What's your concern at this point? Um, my concern. Well, that's the thing. Is um, as a regular listener, I I want to know like what what that line is. When do I stop indulging that? Because um, why? Well, for me, it's the full Nelson. <laughs> when they want when they want me to get him in the full Nelson. And actually, like, and then do like a pile driver <laughs> on them, or drop an elbow on them from from right. the upper upper bunk. With with somebody like this, the focus of sex is more the the pain and not you know the intimacy is sort of lost along the way, and it's she's focusing on she wants you to do specific things that are very painful or, or even risky. And one of the things does she have insight into what's going on? Oh, and uh, right, it sounds right. like you have an understanding. Uh, I'm bored. Well, look, here's the thing. Here, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, you can't, if you, in, you know, people have sort of, um, 
they're, these, these things will spin out if you indulge them. Right. Today, it's the, uh, it's the pillow. Tomorrow, it's uh, the entire sofa. You know, actually, one, a sofa dropped on her head, and uh, before you know it, uh, you know, you're, you're um, raping her with a, a table leg. <sighs> yes, I hate to get so graphic, but this is this is his next stop. And that's no good. Yeah, and then you get a, you, know, you kill her and you get arrested. And it's a, a disaster. Uh, just reel it in a little. Like if she says, "Look, I want you to do this," say, well, you know, I don't mind slapping you on the butt a little, but I'm not comfortable with this. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, you can yeah. contain her. Well, no. If you she can't. keeps, if she keep what? No, what? Somebody what? like no, that what? is not going to be satisfied with sex unless she's having more and more. <laughs> Pain, I, I, and that's going to become the focus of on. the whole session. Justin did the I'm going to say something in here. I and 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 then like the I don't know if I should say this exile. Go ahead. I was with a girl once who wanted me to p- pull her hair, yeah, and call her daddy's little whore. Nice. And and I very I I couldn't and afterward you know she I, I was asking her what she liked and of course and, and she's like yeah if you could do this <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. and I said uh, I was like the pulling the hair part I think I could do. I've done and like that'd be fun and you get into that, but sure. the daddy's little whore. I, I, and I, I was very delicately going to try to get into where it, a la an Adam or a Doctor Drew, get into where that comes from. And you know, knowing that there's something on the on the other side of that door, I was like, is there? I, I'm just curious where that comes. She's going to sleep and like, my eyes are like, you know, like in a cartoon. My, the eyes are the only things you see in the room. I was terrified. I was like, where, where does that come from? The daddy's little whore thing is that? And very casually, she was like. Well, both my uncles abused me uh, for you know several years, and I'm fine with it. You know, it's nothing that. And she claimed to to be fine, and I was like, obviously you're not. You know, if this is something that, and I couldn't touch her again because I felt like right. I was perpetuating that line of abuse. You know, I felt like I was, and 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 plus, I just could never do that. Pull someone's hair and out loud say "Daddy's little whore" without either laughing or like you know yeah. flogging myself afterwards. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta mean it is the problem. Well, that's yeah, what, when profound lack of insight. On reading it part. off a tele prompter right. screws it up daddy's little whore yeah. yeah i had i had i did i had a girlfriend say that uh she wanted me to uh, you know say uh say nasty and uh, mean things to her and i told her i didn't like her mom <laughs> <laughs> she, she got angry you and, run out of ideas i know like i don't care for the woman and she, uh, and she was angry and i'm like that okay this is it's nasty this is it's better calling you a little minx isn't it <laughs> always a comedian <laughs> well i meant it <laughs> here, here's a, a, here, here's the thing. Kevin may not be equipped at 17 with his first uh, girlfriend rough, yeah. to handle this. This could Poor this guy. could be a tall order. On the other hand, he shouldn't flat out dump her. I think he should at least attempt to sort of contain it and see if he once in a while you can sort of if they're not too far gone, if their case isn't isn't terminal, you can sort of guide them toward the light a little bit by saying, you know, look, I'm not gonna do that. I don't I don't I don't want to degrade you that way. And blah blah blah. You might get another four months or uh, or eleven humps out of the <laughs> as I like to call it. I measure in hump years. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that's what Kevin was asking. Out of the relationship. But in that relationship. Well, what just, do you think he was asking? And would you he, shut up? How dare you attack me? Is he there? Is he there? Kevin? He's there. Yeah. What were you asking? Well, I was asking because I've indulged her a little bit with, like, a little, getting a little rougher and stuff. But um, I really wanted to know at what point should I stop? Because, like, I don't want to hurt her. It, it will, you should stop where you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And it, it will spin. It will spin out of control. And, uh... Next thing you know, you'll be having sex with a corpse. Hey, Kevin, don't you ever just say to her, like, doesn't that hurt? Like, I don't want to hurt. Do you, do you guys talk? I mean, is there a lot of communication going on? Yeah, well, when I say, like, you know, I don't want to hurt you or whatever, like, start to back down, she's, at first she just goes with it and tells me again, and then she's a little put off by it almost, you know, if I don't, if I don't. Kevin, huh? let, me, let me give you some sage advice. Don't get her pregnant. Okay. <laughs> You're not going to marry her. No, God, no. Uh, get your kicks in, have a good time, use protection, and see if you can steer her toward the light a little bit. But uh, that may be a taller order than what you're up to at this stage. Right. And she like may it. she may be 10 years uh, yeah. and yeah. and 15 years. 10 years, actually doing 15 years of therapy in that 10-year span away from uh, being able to yeah. tolerate that intimacy. God. All right. Use protection in every sense of the word. Yeah, because what it, this is fine. You have a fling, whatever. You learn a lesson, but you get someone pregnant. Now you oh, got crazy uh, mama God. raising raising the kid. Justin Long uh, here tonight from uh, Dodgeball out in theaters. Number one last week. 
As soon as that flash in the pan, <laughs> Spider-Man goes away. It'll be uh, number one again this week. Yeah. We'll uh, take ourselves. Dr. Bruce, by the way, filling in for uh, Dr. Drew. Take a quick break. Doing a, doing a great job. Thank great you. job. Great job. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Justin Long here tonight from Dodgeball. Number one at the box office, and, uh, and I'm out of all my bits. And getting great, great <laughs> reviews, great yeah. reviews. All right, let's. Uh, and I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. Uh, oh, here's what happened. I uh, I was going to see it this weekend, but I always go. I uh, always always go to that ArcLight Theater, mm. and they had uh, the terminal there. They oh. didn't have dodgeball. Oh, really? At the ArcLight. <sighs> yeah, thirteen thirteen movies. <laughs> and uh, they're too artsy fartsy over there. They yeah. got that like uh, kung pao soccer and all this crazy <laughs> artsy crap. You know, subtitles. Give me a break. Uh. I want to read. I go to that place uh, with the books at, uh, where they lend you the books. Uh, 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 Amoeba. Uh, Biblia. No. No. What do they call that? What is the big house where they lend you the, the books? The bathroom. Uh, coffee table. Big. And now schools have them. Why? Li- children's li- store. Lie? The children's Library. store. Library. 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 Yeah. Right. If I wanted to read, I would go to that li- I would go to that place. But I don't want to read at the theater. I want to watch mm. and hear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think they got movies over at that thing. At the at the <laughs> house with the at the Children's Library. Li- li- library. The free library. book. Library. Giant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let me tell you. You want to hear what a loser my dad was when I was growing up? He would he would actually rent records, vinyl <laughs> records. And not rent, but check out vinyl records. And then the record them? No, just take them home and listen to them. <laughs> Imagine the shape they were in, too, by the way. Listen to you know, Herb Albert. Uh, it's been checked out 7,000 times before he gets to it, just scratching <laughs> away. And then bring it, bring it back. And they'd put these stickers on it, like uh, with a little record saying, don't leave me in the car. Like... <laughs> The sad record, I'll melt. That's, you know what I mean? Like, and look, right. here, here's the thing, by the way. Just put the sticker that says, don't leave me in the car. You don't, I don't actually have to see the sad, the sad record who's melting. So it's fine. I'm an adult. I, I'll do the math. I don't, need, I don't need to see the pouting record that's all wrinkly now because the sun got to it. Just, just put a little sticker on there. Don't leave it in the car. I, I get it. That's enough. I need the picture. All right. Where are okay. we going? Germany or Florida? That's the game. This is sweeping oh. the uh, country, by the way. Brian? What's up, guys? All right, 17. Uh, here's yeah, how Germany uh, anyway, Florida Do you remember works. me? I had, the, uh, I had the 11-year-old mom you about had a week the... ago, two weeks ago. How do you forget oh, that? Oh, you, called, you did a Germany or Florida with 11-year-old mom? No, no, I had the 11-year-old mom. Remember I said uh, I was asking about like, if that would affect my development or not. Oh, yeah. Remember that? that was about two weeks ago or so. Yeah, it's all coming, uh, it's oh, coming back to me now. Who cares? Yeah. Tell Anderson I said thank you, yeah. too, by the way. All right. All right. Did I not like you that time, too? Or were we <laughs> you, cool? you, you and Drew are, are fans. I don't know if Anderson is now. Oh, okay. But that's okay. Well, Anderson doesn't even like himself. Uh, well, that, that explains a lot. All right. So go ahead. All right. Um, let's see here. The right, so here's blank. the thing. He asked the bizarre he, he asked. Uh, he asked a bizarre question. He Okay, two, first off, Germany or Florida. He asked a bizarre question or tells the bizarre story. We guessed. Did it come from Germany or Florida? Because mm-hmm. all, that's where all right. bizarre. The, right. That's the hotbed for bizarre. It's activity. all. It's either it's either Germany or Florida. <laughs> that's it. Those are your two choices. And by the way, I don't know why police don't just either you know when they come across a body that's where the genitals have been eaten or something. It's like, all right, half of you go to Germany, we'll go to Florida. Let's get this guy because it could only be that could only be in those two places. All right. All so right. and your your mom was eleven when she had you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you and you were a preemie, right? Yeah, yeah, like a oh couple weeks or a month or so, somewhere in there. All right, but look at you. Happens. But you're fine. You landed on your feet, right? For the most part, yeah, for the most part. Right, and now it's cool because you can date your mom's friends. <laughs> and the nice I they're not all dried up. Indeed, uh, it works out well. Right. I dated one of my mom's friends, I'd throw up. <laughs> you, you get like a hot 21-year-old. That's you're true. 17. It's got its perks. It really does. All right, all right, okay. go ahead. All right. Okay. A resident of blank was taken into custody late Saturday. Wait, start. Afternoon. Start again. I was. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, a resident of blank was taken into custody late Saturday afternoon for indecent exposure. Six-year-old blank blank was allegedly intoxicated, having spent the morning and early afternoon in a local tavern. 
Local police cited him crossing the street at 4.48 p.m. completely naked and arrested him. Initially ticketed for jaywalking, he was held in custody later on for indecent exposure. Mm-hmm. Well, not the world's greatest example in no. Germany or Florida right. because a guy got drunk and stopped on the street uh, nude. Uh, I'm going Germany. I'm going Germany. I'm going Florida. Florida. The, the use of the word tavern. I'm, I'm, All right. You know. We got two. And he, he said blank, which uh, suggests uh, maybe a German name. But you wouldn't we say resident. We got two Germanies. We got two. Ger- we got two Germanies and one Florida. Which is it, Brian? Uh, I'm sorry, Adam. It's uh, Carl, outside of Coral Gables, Florida. Wow. Mm. Because you wouldn't say a resident of Germany. You'd say a resident yeah. of Florida. Yeah. Uh, he said resident. That's true. He and he did resident. it with a Floridian accent. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brian. We're going uh, to send you out a windbreaker. Just send you out a windbreaker? That's awesome. Yeah. I love yeah, Not the jackets. This guy awesome. farts. Okay. All right, buddy. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thanks. All right. See, I thought the eleven-year-old mother giving birth was a Germany or Florida question. It, it, it is amazing. Although his 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 reading skills are pretty pretty <laughs> solid for a guy who was raised by someone who's younger than he was. Okay. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> Let's take a little break. Uh, Justin Long here tonight from Dodgeball, and we'll be right back after this. Hey everybody. Love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce. Dr. Bruce, filling in for Dr. Drew and doing a, a wonderful job when the mics aren't on. Where is <laughs> Dr. Drew? <laughs> Where is Dr. Drew? That's what I want to know. I'll tell you what, I'm Dr. a huge fan, by the way, of Dr. Drew. He's, he's, he's <laughs> probably, always got an answer. Probably be best that it probably you would be disappointed. <laughs> you would be disappointed. First off, he's a picker. He kind of can't stop picking himself. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, like a, scabs and whatnot? He's a mess. Yeah, I can't stop him. He thinks there's, like, bugs on him all the time. Mm-hmm. So, and then you got the chromatosis and the halitosis and the anistosis. He's a disaster. Mm. So you stay. You, it's just best that he lives on in, in your mind. Right. You, you know what I mean? Just the voice in my head. Yeah, it's like. it's it's like In my heart. <clears throat> when uh, the, uh, the guy didn't make it home from Vietnam and the mom says he died a hero. You know what I mean? He, uh, yeah, F4, he uh, saved his wingman and went into the drink. When really, just he was stabbed by a Vietnamese hooker. Right. You know, <laughs> best you should think of, of of Drew that way. As a Vietnamese hooker? Yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. That's ex- <laughs> because I'm one step ahead of you. That's exactly what I mean. But uh, Bruce doing a uh, fantabulous job. And uh, later on in the week, or uh, at least next week or something, I think we have a host, I think uh, Dr. Marcel is coming in here. If this is true, you're going to go to jail, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's a drunken Dr. Bruce. What was that? Dr. Marcel is great because he's a plastic surgeon, and he has the uh, year-round tan and the pinky ring Uh, and the Italian horn medallion. Really? uh, Yeah, they don't don't disappoint. Drives a Porsche. (laughs) So he sports the medallion in here? A huge medallion. Well, he can't fit it into the studio. (laughs) Actually, it takes a refrigerator a hand truck to get it actually out of the Porsche and into the studio. Yeah. He usually but I bet you show him there. You show him some respect. He works with breasts. He's, he doesn't he's, work with metal. He's 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 he's, not a, metal he, he's a, a great genius. he's a great guy. So if if you have, but clearly there is a difference between the plastic surgeons uh, and just the regular physicians. They are the pimps of right. the doctors. They they wear the gold rope chain bracelets and uh, that kind of thing. Like put it this way. Put it this way. Plastic surgeons would be like 10 times more likely to dye their hair, for instance, mm-hmm. yeah. than, than a regular physician or emergency. Right. <laughs> totally different cat, the guy who's working the emergency room and the guy who's uh, working on the uh, implants. Yeah. That's all. He's going to come in and he'll, uh, he'll do, uh, give us advice about uh, you know, breast implants or any kind of augmentation or nose jobs or any of that. So I think that's uh, next week. And then Dr. Alter is coming oh, in here, yeah. by the way. Dr. Alter, the guy who does the gender reassignment. Oh, yes. Uh. Who is a brilliant guy, except for the part where he lops off junk. <laughs> My doctor. Other than that, he's, he's, he's fantabulous, and he, he's really sharp. He's, he's one of the only guys that has a, uh, like a dual degree or certification in uh, he's urology, a urology and, and, and a plastic sur- surgeon. And, plastic. And, yeah. and by the way, to, to be board certified in urology and plastic surgery, means uh, you, you're hitting the books, but uh, nutty as the day is right. Long, so I was going to say, you got to see, if you could have seen these guys in medical school, it would be very instructive, very interesting, because you get the plastic surgeons, they're sitting there looking around going, hey, you know, I'm only going to, I learn just yes, what right. I need to well, know pla- for a short period of time. Plastic surgeons, like, how many roofies can I smuggle <laughs> out of here so I can get laid this weekend? <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, let's face it. The gynecologists are a little suspect, too. Yeah, you gotta, watch you, gotta, you gotta watch those guys. So, uh, Alter, by the way, who's uh, the one I always, you know, he, th he's, he thinks he's doing everyone a service because they bought into this whole, hey, it's a, a woman trapped inside a man's body. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 we gotta get the fire department to get him out. Get the jaws of life. Oh, my God. I didn't realize there was a woman trapped inside your body. Well, that's different. Why didn't you say so? Let's get that penis off right away and get you some breasts. Oh, I see. Woman Stats. trapped. In yeah, I'm like, no, that's crazy. That just means you're crazy. Like, what if I said there's no, what if what if Napoleon was trapped inside my body? What would you do? You get some surgery, or would you just give me some therapy? Well, yeah, well, for your sake and Napoleon's. Yeah, you, Napoleon's, you both want him out of there. He's got to breathe. <laughs> so is he a guest? He's got to conquer Europe. That's right. Is he a guest under false it. pretenses, or are you no. normal? No, he, abuse he, himself. He he can. He's perfectly capable of uh, defending, defending himself. himself. Is he? Yes. Is his name really Doctor yes. Alter? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. That's, That's one of those kind of whatever. Yeah, like Justin Long. Right. Yeah. 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 Perfect. <laughs> Just fits. Yeah. Yeah. Just fits. Well, I mean, oh. when back when you used to do AM radio, it was uh, you went by Dick Nib Niblet, right? Oh, <laughs> that was I mean, that good. Was, Dick Niblet. Remember in the morning? No, <laughs> don't remember. All right. Yeah, the whole jingle and everything it was funny. All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's get to the phones. We got to get to the phones. So uh, anyway, Alter will uh, be in there. We got like a gynecologist. This is your last night, right? No, tomorrow night. Oh really? <laughs> You're in luck. Wow. This is, you were thinking maybe this is my last night. Yeah, this is gonna be my last night. <laughs> as on the air ever. That's right. Yeah, the grease man will be filling it. For <laughs> no. me. Whatever happened to little schmaggy schmaggy? <laughs> right, it's an old old radio guy. <laughs> Brianna. Yeah. You're uh, 18. Yes, sir. What's up? Hi. Um, I was just wondering if y'all could help me a little bit with my love life, considering this is love line. All righty. This is what we do. That's yeah, right. well. I think she's implying that's not what we do. All right. <laughs> I was just trying to... Um, I have a problem with keeping boyfriends and getting boyfriends. Mm-hmm. Join mm -hmm. the club. <laughs> help me out. <laughs> yeah, well, you have trouble getting them and keeping them. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll get one, and then, like, he'll just stop calling me, or I'll just, mm -hmm. or else I just can't find one at all. All right, you're 18. Mm -hmm. I'm, all, all bets are off. I, I, you, can't, you can't give yourself these, um, pigeonhole yourself at 18. You have some good relationships, bad relationships, there's quick turnover. Yeah, but I've only had one relationship in my whole life. Really? In all 18 years I've been living. So how, why well, do you say that you have a hard time keeping I don't know. Like, my last boyfriend, we were together for like a year, and then one day he just broke up with me, and I was like, why? And he, he didn't give me a reason at all. He was just like, because I need a break. All right. Well, I need and a break, What are you doing now? Are you going to college? Um, I was going to school, but then I dropped out, and now I just work at Hooters. Oh, you work mm. at Hooters? Hello. <laughs> what do you do over there? Do what? Do you do? What do you do? You're, on the, you're out on the floor? Yeah, I'm a Hooter girl. Bonesy, you're, in the, you're in the outfit and stuff? Yep. Nice. Wow. Yeah. You must have a lot of... Let me tell you something about Hooters, too. Uh, the, you know, the, the everyone focuses on sort of the rack and stuff with the Hooters and the cleavage and everything in <sighs> the name. But uh, nice, nice, they're tight shorts. The Daisy Dukes. Yeah, they're they're awesome. No, they're, they're well, they're they're like bright orange. Right, they're like roller girl. Pants. Roller girl really, I think uh, they're shorts. they're extremely unflattering. The shorts. Really? Yeah. They're about to change them. They are? Yeah. To they, culottes. They're what are they going with? Just a, 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 a wisp of yarn? <laughs> <laughs> what are they going with? I hope they're getting smaller. Yeah, they are. They are. Wow. You know those little boy short underwears? Yeah. Oh, oh, like the midways? Yeah. Oh, We're getting so, those. Oh. It's sort of like, almost like a uh, cycling shorts, right? Mm-hmm. I like All it. Right. So, yeah. Brianne, is there, a, is there a, a characteristic personality for a Hooter girl other than... Um, yeah. You have to be extremely outgoing and flirtatious. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And so now guys never, but guys must constantly hit on you. Like, isn't that kind of what it is? Guys that go there to. Yeah. I, just guys uh, hit on me all the time. Yeah. Well, you don't like any of them. Um. No, I give people my number and stuff, but usually whenever like really? we start hanging out or whatever, like some people I like, and then they'll just quit calling me, or some people I'll be like, oh, you know, and then I'll just stop calling. Ooh. Wow. Oh, holy, I can't use the f word. As bizarre as it seems, mm. I, had to, I had to put her on hold because uh, not what a hooter girl should be saying. Right? Although, it, yeah, it, it, I'm I'm fully erect right now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm past that. <laughs> Is that weird? I'm back. I'm back. Flaccid. <laughs> I'm, 
I mean, uh, she's got to be hot, right? If she's a, I mean, it, you ooh, know, what, once in a while, one, right? One sneaks under Slips the radar. The <laughs> but yeah. you know, when it's you, sort of, it's sort of like <laughs> once in a while you see a guy on the football team with a horrible physique. Like it's like, how huh, he might? Oh, huh? not all of them. I guess not. Maybe his dad's a coach. Right. Like, yeah, once in a while, and and boy, that's always that. There really should be a children's book in there, the ugliest Hooter girl. Yeah. Like once all twenty of them come out, and there's that one, and, and everyone's focus just goes right to the one with the fat ass because it's like, oh, sweetie pie. I'm gonna get her. I'm gonna get her. My name is Raquel. I'll be your waitress this evening. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> would you like some dipping sauce? <laughs> you boys look hungry. <laughs> Isn't it a tip off the one when he went to thirty two ounce Heineken <laughs> for an extra dollar? <clears throat> when you hear the statement, uh guys always hit on me. What's yeah. that's Yeah. yeah. What about it? What huh? <laughs> well the perception that guys are always hitting on him. Sometimes if you order the cod, we'll sing a song. <laughs> I'm all natural, by the way. FYI, okay. let, let me let, let me check on the fish tacos. I'm not sure if they're deep fried. We're, I always like the part where someone's been working at the restaurant for four years. They got to check on something. Is that uh, is that is that chicken burgers? Is that breaded and deep fried, or is that just a flat? Let me check on. That. Yeah, right. Uh, let me check. Right. And I like that you're still I'm the still ugly doing the I don't got that. I don't have any range. Let me check. Let me check. You brought out seventy of them in the last twenty minutes. What do you got? To check. Check. Close your eyes. You'll see one when you close your eyes. Then check. Let me check on that. Yeah. Is Brianna still there? I don't she, care. You know, once okay. in a while, you get a homely Hooters girl, and it her. becomes very sad. Ask her what happens. Maybe that's why it's hard because all she's all her colleagues are are these gorgeous yes, Hooters chicks. Yes. And, and here, here's it's a relative thing. Right. You, you would rather be a six in a sea of fours oh, yeah. than a seven in a sea of nines. Yeah. Very powerful. Mm. Very powerful. Stay profound. It's very profound. profound. Yeah. Brianna? Yes? Do you look good in your outfit? Um, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly small girl. Oh, God. Yeah. I wear like a size one. Ooh, oh, <laughs> Lord. Yeah. How do we turn up the... Uh, the heat? I, w I wear a three and a half. The AC on? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Justin digs that. He likes a petite guy. I'm, just, I'm so pent up. Yeah. <laughs> Ready to explode this guy. <laughs> Come on over, buddy. Where, oh, where, oh, she's in Atlanta. Go. So, Brianna, have we been helpful? No. <laughs> I, I think I've boosted her confidence maybe yeah. a little bit. Look, here, you here. sound hot. <laughs> so easy. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, it, you got to watch out. There's going to be a lot of guys. You give their number to them. If you hook up too quick with them, they'll just look at it as a sort of disposable relationship. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, but, but again, you're 18. So just take it slow. Well, what's your typical date like? Do you get the yeah, well, Do you get past yeah. the first date, or you don't even get the first date? What's the? Well, sometimes. Well, sometimes I get past the first date. I mean, like it. Date. It all depends on mm -hmm. the person, really. Because well, sometimes I'll like, go out with. No, 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 no. All right. Okay. We're done. She's okay. eighteen. Yeah, 18. She's attractive. No, she had a boyfriend for a year who broke up with yeah. her. It's a, she had a boyfriend since she was sixteen or seventeen. It's no big deal. She does a little dating. Deep Cop. mystery of life for her. Why this boyfriend broke up? Or why? <laughs> but why? Can't, can't but you're supposed to be all over the map from the yeah. age of like fifteen to twenty five sure. with your dating, with your relationships, and all that. She's right in the sort of middle, middle healthy zone there of uh, trying to sort herself out. It's no yeah. big deal. It always yeah. amazes me when when eighteen years old and you're like ah, this crisis because you haven't found you're having trouble. I don't even know what that means. When I was eighteen, I was you know yeah, like right. you said, all over the map. How old are you now, by the way? I'm forty seven. <laughs> wow, you look great. <laughs> Thanks, a lot of water. <laughs> Chug a lot. Those, yeah, let me, those... let me let me let me ask about this water, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, all all I heard for mm, here, here okay here's what happened and I brought this up before but it's been a while dietitians and diet experts and everybody and even lay people all they would ever say is uh, for the from 1970 to 1995 uh, you got to drink more water you're not drinking enough oh. water people aren't drinking enough water oh right. and if your diet the first thing you should do if you're doing a diet first number one most important thing drink water. Hydrate yourself. Drink water. You're not drinking enough water. It flushes the system out. Any diet is going to work better when you drink more water. And there's all this thing. And, and, and dietitians and doctors and health gurus and everything was always begging people. As Americans, we do not drink enough water. And then they would come up with these crazy things where you should be drinking, you know, eight full glasses of water a day. And people don't nearly drink enough water. There's all this stuff. Okay. Finally, everyone started drinking water. 
Everyone started carrying water around. I mean, no one carried water 10 years ago. You didn't have water sitting next to you in the car. You didn't have sports bottles. Right. You know, people kids, people are walking around sucking on water all day. I mean, think about what your life used to be like. You would walk around with no water. Once in a while, you'd stumble across a drinking fountain and you suck something off a hose. hose. Right. Yeah, but you never drank water over the course of the day. Like, when you left your yeah. house, you didn't... Like, what were the chances you'd have... Like, your mom, when she was driving around, was there water in the car? <laughs> it was... Uh, only water yeah. in the car was in the radiator. There's no water floating around the car. That was right. bizarre. Uh, so here's the thing. Now everyone is drinking... Mm, thousand times more water than they drank 10 years ago, and everyone's put on 20 pounds. So what's up? How, how come everyone's getting fatter, but we're all drinking the water? And, and maybe the water isn't, isn't the big deal that everyone made it out to be. And how does that work? I mean, where are all these dietitians that just focus on a stupid thing? Like, you've got to do more. You've got to drink. You've got to hydrate yourself. You've got to flush your toxins out. People don't drink. A, Americans drink too much. And then you start doing it, nothing. You just get fatter. Well, I think it's like people that are overweight many times... Others will comment, oh, I never see them eating. And it's like, I think also sometimes they take on behaviors of people they want to be like or that are thin. So mm -hmm. I don't think those are the people that are actually drinking all that water, the people that have the weight problems. I think what's happened, we're no. more sedentary. There's much more fast Everybody, food every, Everybody's chugging more <clears throat> water than they were before. And no, it's I, tenfold. No. You're disagreeing with me? Yeah, I'm disagreeing. I'm you, saying you don't it's, think it's, Americans drink ten times more water than they did ten years ago? I mean, think about the industry. Think about the bottled yeah. water industry. Right. I you just don't think... Sparklets for years, and now there's a hundred different kinds <laughs> of, of tote water. You know, when you go to the liquor store, right. it dominates the, the, uh, the, the uh, freezer section. Right. If you work with people that have obesity problems, they tend not to, they tend not to have the taste for water. They're m more interested in soda or something that's right, not... You have no answer. <laughs> Just say you don't answer. know. Say you don't know. What about the rest of America? How come America's getting fatter because and we're drinking more water? They're not the eating not the right diet. It's, they're not not a big a, it's not that big a deal. Exercise is down. High caloric intake. Oh, the water, fast food. But, but the water turns out no big deal no you have to combine water with proper diet and exercise and then right. it does just, just, aid in weight loss and maintain yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't the 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 magic cure that everyone that they were yapping about 10 years ago begging everyone to drink more water well, you just misunderstood. Water in and of itself. Oh, shut up. You know, someone should do a documentary. You're not coming back tomorrow. About, oh. the, about, the fast food, about fast food in our culture and how. Yeah, they really should. The ill effects it has, not only on the body, but on society as a whole. Guys should, guys should super eat size nothing but McDonald's. What's that? The super size movie. Hadn't heard yeah. of that. You can call it whatever you want. That's a nice title. but Yeah. <laughs> but until someone goes out and does it. I would I, I prefer idea. like 30 days of fast food. What happens? Yeah. Dot, yeah, dot, that, dot. That's catchy. Yeah. That's <laughs> catchy. That's smooth. That flows. That's got a flow to it. Or uh, the anal bleeding, a true story. Yeah, yeah. All right, stop arguing with me, Bruce, when you know I'm right. Just yeah, water green, sucks. Just, Adam. Hey, it sucks, I agree. Right, Justin? Water's the worst. Yeah, it'll kill you. <laughs> I, just, I just mean there's a bunch of stuff that everyone makes a big deal about, and then it just really turns out not to be anything. That's like, I'm, I'm angry. It's like the razor that's blades in Halloween. That's Halloween right. Game. Yeah, it turns out Why to be you, nothing. Uh, I think go off on the Atkins smoke. diet. All this car, everybody's avoiding carbohydrates. Yeah, that's crazy. It's well, look, nonsense. easy for you, uh, Ichabod. <laughs> <laughs> what do you care? You got nothing on you. You got veins coming out of your stomach. You got nothing. Well, you got a, that Adam's apple sticks out further in your nose. You got nothing. My, my mother yes. called me the other day, and, and she was like, "Honey, I uh, I'm very nervous. Uh, I want you to I want you to be careful when you fill up your car with gas because people have been blowing up left and right, oh, left sure. and right." She yeah, said, "I saw it on right. Oprah. Left people right. are blowing up all over the country. Spontaneous combustion. Yeah, sure. Uh, and yeah." She, so now it's academic. It's uh, epidemic. It's uh, pit bull attacks, uh, secondhand smoke. I mean, uh, oh, ask, ask Rob Reiner. Fifty something thousand Americans die of secondhand oh, yeah. smoke is every he, year. Is he one of those? Crazy oh yeah, Jeez. yeah. Fifty something thousand <laughs> people <laughs> right. die of secondhand smoke. I mean, oh. right? I right. mean, as a as a physician, you must see this every day. I think it's one of those bogus public health campaigns. Really? What about mm -hmm. what about it being a first rate killer? <laughs> What about secondhand uh, I, smoke being a first-rate killer? Uh, I don't understand that as a first-rate killer. No one's adequately well, explained it. Fifty thousand Americans, fifty-six thousand Americans. What is not Drew enough say for about you? That? 
<laughs> Teresa says he's never seen anybody uh, for second hand awesome. smoke. I've never heard of it. He agrees with and me. And then he said he, read it, he said he read a uh, story. Uh, they uh, a statistic came out in JAMA, and they thought as many as eight people died of second hand <laughs> smoke last year. But uh, <laughs> more people died from gorillas. Right? Yeah. But look at the billboard: fifty uh, four thousand Americans second hand smoke, first rate killer. Yeah, <laughs> just do whatever you want. That's that's, that's all. Just see, I've just I've just really decided that. Uh, you can just say whatever you want now. I'm going to just say whatever you want. <laughs> I think there's more people and, and getting... Ryan, my, but why, why, why stop at 54,000? Why don't you just go 54 million? I wouldn't why say the uh, population of China was taken out by secondhand smoke well, I would... last year. I mean, if you're going to lie, you're going to go big. You, you know what I mean? Like, don't say you're all city in high school. Say you won the Super Bowl if you're out on a date and you're lying to a chick. You know what I'm saying? We could have used that for the war. You know, Saddam right. Hussein was actually responsible. Not only did he have a stash of weapons, he's responsible for secondhand smoke. And yeah, you see people. him with the cigar every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, they got a, they they've outlawed it on the beach. How, do you think he... How much money they spent on those campaigns? Secondhand mm, smoke. millions. You know, you got to get those public health millions. people off on a different tangent. Like, nah. what about? Why? Contact high. Maybe they'll no. go off and worry so about crystal people. meth. First yeah, rate. Yeah, crystal meth. Content. First rate killer. First rate killer. We got no other. We got no other problems. Yeah, that's no that's our only problem. Yeah. yeah. Ashley. Hello. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> She's asking what's happening. What's, what's up? up, baby doll? Um. Okay. I'm like really tight, and I can't even get like a tampon in. And my mm. boyfriend wants to have sex with me, and I don't want it to hurt. Mmm. Now, so, are like, you it, are you petite? Yeah. Um, how much you weigh? Like Justin's, 95. Justin's, Justin's this close. Say, say that again, Ashley. Like 95. Just say it a little slower if you could. She's 95 16, pounds. you pig. Sorry. How dare you. 95 pounds. 95 yeah. pounds. You, you're, you're a behemoth. You're yeah. like a whale. So, and uh, do you, uh, <clears throat> so you're just small down there. Yeah. Is your boyfriend big? Um, like seven and a half inches, he says. He says, <laughs> "Wow, and you know how you, uh, you know how you measure. Maybe Justin isn't aware of this. Of the penis, at least how I do. Right. It's from the center of the anus <laughs> to just, just beyond the tip, just beyond." <laughs> Well, then I'm a good five or six. Oh, yeah. Remember, you're, you're, it's hard to find the center. you got to use a number two pencil sometimes. But uh, from the center to just past the tip, just past the end. So, uh, Ashley, so, how yeah. old's your boyfriend? He's 19. He's 19. Oh, and wow. you're 16? Yeah. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And you have a little girl voice. Sound very yeah, cool. but she's petite. You weren't, you weren't uh, molested or anything, were you? I don't think so. Uh, All right. Just the answer. Where's no. So, dad and mom are married and living home with you? Yeah. All right. Sounds a little... Here's, uh, here's, uh, here's the thing. 19 and 16, 16. is a little, uh -uh. little well, stretch. Well, statutory really? rape in most states. Well, not necessarily. What state is she in? She's called Louis from Indiana. Oh, well. I think Louisiana, you're okay. Indiana. Right. At least I hope. Well, All right. The, uh, All right. It's not in the book. It's true, not in the book true of all look, answers? True look for it uh, the other night. How long have you guys been together? It was pretty high. A few months. Oh, few months. Okay, why don't you do this, uh, Ashley? Why don't you just take it slow? What are, are you in the eleventh uh, grade or something? Yeah. Wow. And he's been out of high school for a couple of years. Yeah, he's in college. Junior college. Um, Dapo University. D oh, Dapo. Dapo. Dap University. Dapo. Yeah. Oh, where that guy Michael Lesney goes. All right. Yeah. So let's see. He's a he's a college student. He's a good guy. Yeah. He treats you right. Okay. Yeah. She sounds so cute. Well, take it, take it, sure. take it slow, though. Take it Let's real slow. Mine. Yeah. That's all right. God. And uh, and here's the thing: if you're and and by the way, uh, d you know, if it's uh, if it's tight down there, uh, d express it to him and tell him. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Yeah. Do you First, feel? Yeah. That's, wow. And let me say this: I got a couple things to say. Uh, you know, we have to consult the book every time somebody says uh, how old they are and how old they're girlfriend or boyfriend is because in Hawaii it's drastically different than it is in North Carolina which is different than it is in California can we just go ahead and agree on a number right you know from uh, instead of having it be a different number state to state and by the way isn't it easy to screw up I mean if you come from a state where the age of consent is 15 and then you move to one where it's 18 and you you grew up there, and then you, your job took you out to this other one, or whatever it is, or you went to college somewhere. I was like, wouldn't it be easy just to screw up? I mean, could you even blame the person? 
You know what I'm saying? How about we right. do this? Another thing, too, is I, I can't figure out. I, I travel a lot, and I try to drink uh, when I travel. And some bars open at this time, and some states they close at this time. Let's just do this. Let's standardize the whole thing with the bars opening and closing, and let's standardize the whole age of consent thing. Yeah. Let's call it 12, and let's say bars stay open till uh, 6 a.m., and uh, open again at 6.15 uh, well, a.m. <clears throat> that following day. So, again, 12 years old, 6 a.m. to 6.15. Uh, 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 okay, 13. How do we say this diplomatically? Uh, maybe the states that have a lower age of consent want to keep it that way. Ooh. Maybe. What politician is going to campaign? <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's my biggest plank in my platform. I want to keep it at, at 13. There may be certain communities that would strenuously object to that. All right. Yeah. All right. Keep we, thy moral compass, Ashley. It's we, a little Polonius to Ophelia. Oh, we got to take a... Uh, <laughs> no idea what that was. <laughs> this is it's just taking a bad turn. I'm guessing it was from Galaxy Quest. <laughs> I feel like her father. Justin uh, Long in tonight from Dodgeball. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, yo, it's Bloodline, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Back tomorrow night again, huh? Justin Long in here tonight. Wish Justin was coming back tomorrow night. Ah, I gladly. Dodgeball. Or was that not an invitation? <laughs> no, it wasn't really an invitation, but it but it was a compliment. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. I, yeah, this is fun. Yeah. Dodgeball uh, in theaters uh, as we speak. Number one. Yeah. Last uh, last week. And uh, beat Stepford Wives. I don't. And, and was the. Uh, well, that's right. Step. I don't, uh, it, here's the whole thing. Like, uh, Stepford, Stepford Wives wasn't good when it was on uh, TV in 1972. <laughs> like, the the movie of the week. Like, does anyone... I, I, you wonder how this stuff works. Like, I always wonder, you know, like when... Um, I don't know. And I guess they make money off it. But when they go ahead and make uh, Garfield into a movie oh, or... Yeah. or, or, or or when they when they do even something like Scooby Doo or something like that, it's kind of a crappy cartoon. Yeah, that's thirty right. years old. Does, do people? Do we need? It, here's the whole thing about Scooby Doo. It shouldn't have been made into a cartoon. <laughs> F the movie. Forget about the movie. It shouldn't. Even, it, it, Twenty minutes of Scooby Doo is tw is nineteen minutes too much. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> For, yes, the kids love it. Yeah, maybe that's uh, maybe that's it, or maybe they just don't know any better. But kids are stupid. They're like adults that are dumb. Mm. You know, if you think about it, that's the way I look at kids. <laughs> or retarded. It's dumb or retarded sometimes. <laughs> both. All right, Dodgeball though. There's an original movie. There's no 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 cartoon they're ripping off. No. What do you think the budget was? Do you know? I think it was like it was low. It was like twenty million. I, I know Ben Stiller took a back end. The, I, oh, know, smart. Uh, which is now paying off. Yeah. Um, I think it was like twenty twenty five. We made it back the first weekend. Yeah. Oh, which is Ben Stiller. Rich. Ben, is that right? Ah, uh, well, it's got to be. If he if he took a little pay cut, but got oh, some yeah. of the back end money, and the, the thing did uh, yeah, he's amazingly, it was number one. Yeah, uh, he's hilarious. Good guy. He's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, he uh, just so funny in the movie. He goes so over the top for anybody who's seen it. Um, well, even even if you just seen the commercials, you can see uh, <laughs> the guy's going going nuts. He's going for it. Yeah. And, uh, all right, good guy? Good guy. Vin Vince Vaughn, great guy. Yeah. Christine Taylor, just such a... That's his uh, wife. Ben Stiller's wife, right? A really hideous. Yeah. She's a wreck. She's a wreck. She's a oh, wreck. Oh, nice. Real Mercy Mission. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I don't know if she got in an accident. She's a butterface. Happened. Something. Yeah. yeah. Ten miles of bad road. <laughs> God bless him. I think she's a beard. He must be gay. It's, it's <laughs> you can't be interested in women and be with that. It's a disaster. It's a nice thing he's doing for her, though. His brother, she's, she's, she's a sweet kid, I'm sure. I mean, I guess you gotta be. You gotta be. You gotta have a good heart. Yeah. With a face like that. Yeah. Good God. Yeah. Tough on the eyes. <laughs> does, she, does she have more makeup than Marlon Wayans for the white chicks? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry Stiller's better looking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's that bad. She's actually the funniest woman I've ever met in my life. Funniest hot chick. Funniest hot chick. Maybe that's it. Right. Maybe that's but it. The, I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I was like, she played on a different field. Yeah. Yeah, if she was if she was uh, fat and ugly, she'd have right. She was Paula Poundstone. Right, it would be a disaster. But yeah, fun. It's hard. Yeah, when you're hot. Well, when you're hot, you have no reason to be funny. Right, you, you don't know, have to cultivate you or have a personality. No, you don't even have to talk. Right, you just uh, you just yeah. That's your job is uh, being hot. You become like a a, a piece of a sculpture yeah. or something. You don't you need get to move through around your whole life like that. Yeah, yeah. That's why we resent you. But 
We want to F you simultaneously. <laughs> Emily? Yeah. Spe speaking of, hey, what's, what's happening? On? Yeah. Oh, nothing. Um, I just want to say, by the way, Dodgeball, excellent, excellent film. I really oh, like thanks, Emily. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, great. Um, Thank you. I've been seeing this guy for about, I don't know. <laughs> what was your favorite part? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. Part I'm kidding. Thing. Uh, <laughs> no, can I tell you, though? Oh, she's going to go on with it. Was when uh, you guys were getting nailed with the wrenches. That was awesome. Ah, uh, sweet of you. I was, I was making a joke, like trying to be, uh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay. What's, right. your, uh, what's going on? <laughs> um, well, I've been with this guy for about four or five months, and, um, you know, nothing too serious. I'm just not really looking for, like, a very serious relationship right now. Mm -hmm. But um, we kind of started, you know, getting down, and we didn't have sex because we didn't have a condom. But um, mm -hmm. he, like, likes his balls squeezed. I'm talking, like, white-knuckled, painful squeeze, mm -hmm. like, really, really hard. Really? And, Bruce, yeah. not that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. And um, he like wanted me to put a finger in his butt, <laughs> and your, I didn't know. Your finger? I didn't know what. Your finger. <laughs> yeah, mine. Finger. In his. The yeah. Finger. Okay. That's I didn't know if this was like a normal thing. I mean, I didn't. I just. I don't know. Because I'm not down with the whole butt thing. I mean, that's exit only to me. And right. Like, you know, right. we got down, and I just wanted, you know, I wanted to help him out because I didn't want to leave him hanging, you know. I was like, all right, so I'll do this, but... Did you did you, know did you did you give him the digit? I, I did, yeah. The shocker? You float him the digit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you did put the finger in the butt. I did put the finger in the butt, yeah. And uh, how about the nad clamp? Oh, I did that, too. <laughs> did you drop the nad clamp on him? I did, and he definitely got off on that. It was. I just thought it was really weird, and I was like, okay... Yeah. You know, I guess. You know, well, did he get off on it because it felt good, or you just squeezed so hard something came out? <laughs> <laughs> like running over some toothpaste. <laughs> um, no, just he didn't Maybe that's a new erection. How do, you, how do you pick up on the vibe that he wants his balls squeezed? He, because he I, begs I, for it, I think. He, he brings it up, he articulates it? Yeah, no, he asked for it. He was like, yeah, squeeze my balls. And I was like, wow. Well, like, okay. And he's like, yeah, harder, harder. I'm like, are you serious? I didn't say anything. Um, so I was like, what, uh, Emily, what was going on? During this, was this were you still watching Dodgeball, <laughs> or had you gone home? No, it was no I mean, before like, Dodgeball actually came out. Were you were you were you having intercourse or oral sex or? We were doing pretty much every yeah oral sex. Um, we were we didn't have a condom, so obviously we couldn't have sex. So we were mm -hmm. doing everything but sex. So you were doing the oral sex, uh, squeezing the scrotum, and had the finger in the uh, rectum. Wow. Yeah. And by and, and plenty, uh, spinning a plate with a foot. <laughs> Wow. Sounds like a sequential process. Yeah, yeah I mean Okay. Uh right, by, by the way, yeah, yeah. I mean this is this is <laughs> amazing dexterity. <laughs> was uh wow. So Emily, was he uh, not completely satisfied until you were um Yeah, I mean I was I was actually performing oral sex on him and then he was asking for these things and I did them and he got off. Okay. Uh, We're, uh, Emily, this is going to sound cruel, but uh, are you a big gal? No, I'm not. Really? Because this is the work of a big gal. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it says yeah. big gal written all over. Yeah. Cause <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad experience Adam had when he was young. Well, but you, 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 here's, all, here's all I'm saying. You, 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 you ask this of uh, Stiller's wife, uh, you get a rolling <laughs> pin across the head. It's like, are you kidding me? You're lucky you're seeing me. Squeeze your own balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even going to get undressed. <laughs> Are you high? <laughs> You're so lucky to be with me. You'd like if I take my shoes off. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you know, I just didn't know if this was like a normal thing that I... Uh, I no, how I how old did you say he was, or did you? He's, he's 18. He's 18. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is ambitious. This is a man who has a strong sense of entitlement. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And here's, here's the whole thing about... Uh, well, let's um, the the, uh, the the bung and the balls and all that stuff. Uh, I find it distracting. Some guys are into it. A lot of guys, I don't know. It, it's a cross. I think between it, it doesn't necessarily feel good. They just try to see how much they can get out of somebody. You, you know, like guys yeah. who guy. Here, here's one. The, the, here's the analogy I want to make. Uh, guys who have plenty of money in their wallet and they're still haggling. 
And even though they know right. Right. they couldn't get the car any cheaper, they've been right. to 10 other dealerships, they got plenty of money, they're just doing it. It's almost right. a challenge. You know what I mean? They don't even like it necessarily. They just do it to see if they can do it. Right. And I wonder sometimes the guys with the fingers and the nuts and the, a lot of the anal stuff and stuff, it's like they're almost just seeing how much they can get done with one woman, how far they can right. stretch them, how much they can sort of uh, take This guy sounds like he needs this to fulfill yeah. his sexual requirements. Was his history like that? Has had, had he been with a lot of women? Was he sort of a stud? Actually, he no, more? he hadn't really been with a lot of women. He only been with, I think, two other girls before me. Huh. Wow. Well, yeah. Has he ever was he ever abused, or does he have sort of a weird so. he family of origin? He had a pretty stable family life. Like his and, parents still together. And what what's up with you that you would accommodate him? Well, I just felt like I was like, all right, you know, he went through all this trouble to try to satisfy me, so I yeah. figured that I should return the favor. Uh, what trouble? Right, but you, you giving him oral sex uh, <laughs> is uh, that's uh, you're off the hook. It's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. You paid right. him back with interest. You, you don't need the the finger and the the, the, the <laughs> sack rub. What, when he started with these requests, was this like the first time or second time you had sex or? Oh no, we. This is the first time we'd ever done anything. Wow. Oh yeah. Well, wow. so uh, that's crazy. Wow. That's uh, sounds like he has. I hate the guy, but I kind of nah. Kind of look up to him too. Yeah, respect nah, that's that's wave us, literally. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> wave us. He... All right, hey, here's the whole thing, ladies. Uh, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You really don't, right. especially if you're giving the guy oral sex. <laughs> he, he, yeah, I mean that's like you know, God bless you right there. That's like above and beyond. Yeah. Not yeah. especially, but you just don't have to do what you don't want to do. No, I, I just, I, the, I just, I here, here, here's, here's all, all, all I mean is, is, is when you're, um, when you're giving the guy oral sex, uh, there's, uh, there's no more requests. You, you know what right. I mean? It's, it's closed. <laughs> well, I'm doing, I'm doing everything I can do, or everything I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but here's the thing. Here's, here's it. it's a guy's first time uh, having sex with this girl he loves or he's involved with and he's got to have the pain i mean it sounds like this is uh related yeah. to some sort of abuse right, it's Emily's more a, than just maybe a, yeah he's a weird guy yeah, the entitlement weird guy. thing you is can, you can drop him yeah uh, all right thanks guys I, oh wait a minute well, let me get are you oh, okay. sure yeah how, how how tall are you <laughs> i'm about five foot four about five four yeah how, how much you weigh 117 117 yeah. Like girl. Like All him. right, you're way you're way too skinny to be indulging in this kind of bizarre behavior. Yes. Yeah. Emily, Adam is doing some very complex, complex. Yeah, I did computation some. on the paper here. I'm not sure exactly what. I, it doesn't. The math doesn't work out. But anyway, Emily, <laughs> he's crunching the numbers. Find yeah. a nice guy. Yeah, I'll crunch the numbers. You stop crunching the sand. Yeah. Everyone will be happy. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. You're fine. Yeah. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. Here's the whole thing too. And uh, listen, everybody. Uh, here's the goal. When you're having sex with a with a woman, a woman is a actually performing oral sex. On you. Don't f it up. It's it's really it's like a, a job interview. <laughs> Now's not the time to pick your nose and talk <laughs> about steal, stealing office supplies. Now's the time to clasp your hands and talk about you know Christianity. Later on, go ahead and uh, you know steal a whole copier. You, you know what I mean? You got to get in the door. Yeah, Don't the freak first them. Night, God. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't play you can't play your hand that way. Just I mean, it's like women on the first date don't start talking about starting families and getting pregnant and getting married and stuff because they know it'll freak the guys out. Guys, don't ask for the digit. That's a that's a third date well, request, maybe this, fourth. This guy should be just ecstatic and that's enjoying right. himself, oh, yeah. and he wants to get the vice out for his testicles. And that's, that's right. Something. Uh, right. Who knows? How, how far is it going to go after oh that? That's God. where it's starting. Yeah. That's right. That's right. First, it, it starts, starts with your hands. <laughs> right. Moves, moves then you're, then you're showing us. Hedgehog up before, somebody's before you know. She'll be fisting <laughs> Well, I was just on the sack pressure. I was oh. thinking one of those, one of those things at the, uh, at the auto graveyard that smashes the cars into cubicles. He <laughs> wanted you to drop. <laughs> uh, by the way, what happened to that TV convention where the guy was trapped in the trunk of the car that was due to be smashed? Oh, and their time was Superman running out. 3. Had to pull him out of the trunk. Yeah, mm. they used to be every, yeah. every other Starsky and Hutch that yeah. was in a car. <laughs> right. We're going to compact it. Yeah. It's just the whole idea of walls coming in, yeah. uh, whether it was, it was smashing a car or just something a Bond villain. Star concoction. Wars. It's like, here's how, uh, here's how I'm going to kill people. I'm going to I'm gonna take this very <laughs> elaborate uh, pneumatic and hydraulic. Uh, <laughs> it's got it's thousands of hydraulic lines, pressure. I mean, it's going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Engineering. It's like, how? How about you just shoot him? 
Uh, no, I'd nah. rather. Sm- uh, this Smash is much em. more important. Mm. Really, it's going just the R and D alone on this is going to be <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just, and we're, by the way, we're 14 years away from completion on this project. No, no, I'm going to invent this. Leave me alone. This is how I, I choose to kill. <laughs> and. With a gun, you could take it to them and shoot Absolutely. them. Here, you got to get Makes them over to the compactor. <laughs> Makes no sense. I'm making it anyway. Yeah. And then what about cleanup? If you think about it, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You've seen a compacted body? No. It's a disaster. You don't want to. You no. do not it didn't want make to. It to. The ER. All right, Doctor uh, Bruce here tonight, filling in for uh, Doctor uh, Drew, doing a great job, except for when he talks. <laughs> Justin <laughs> Long in tonight. Fantastic dodgeball number one, everybody. Absolutely. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Bruce filling in for Dr. Drew. Justin Long in studio tonight. Dodgeball, name of the movie. We'll uh, get back to phones. Oh, let's really let's see let's let's help some people. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah. Let the healing begin. Let's let's let Heather it begin. Needs some help. Heather. Hello. You're 14. Yeah. Your friend was stabbed and killed. Yeah. And you have nightmares about it. Uh, for about a month and a half now. How long ago did this happen? It happened a month. Happened six weeks ago. Um, just over Christmas break. So. And. and did you see that? Were you there when it happened? Did you see it happen? Um, no, I I heard about it. A few days before, so I know who did it, and yeah. You heard about it a few days before? Yeah, I heard it. They were talking about it in school, and nobody really noticed me, so I oh. got to hear it, so. Oh, oh. All right, hold on a second. Okay. The, you heard about the stabbing before the stabbing happened? Yes, I told my friend about it, but he just blew it off. And he didn't listen, and these were some r- rival guys? Right. And did they arrest the guys? No, they didn't catch him. But, but, but you know the guys. Yeah, but I have no proof that I actually know what happened, so they would just... It's like a weird out. Dawson's Creek episode. Mm. Yeah, well, so how old was this friend of yours? He was my age. He was 14. And he was a good friend of yours? Yeah, for how a long, few years. How long? You've known him for a few years? Yeah. And you heard guys... This is how the, every one of these calls goes. We end up getting mired in some weird detail. But you heard guys saying they're going to stab this guy. They didn't particularly say stab. They said, we're going to go get him. and We're going to hurt him. Yeah. And you heard them because you were just around near them? Yeah. Just they were, we're talking at, pretty quickly. at school? And and, uh, and so you warned them these guys were going to come get him, and, but yet he didn't listen. And yeah. then he got stabbed, and you know it was these guys. Yeah. And the police, even though it's been um, eight months, uh, right? Yeah. The police have no idea who did it. Well, they had him. They got him in court, but then they didn't have enough evidence on him. I think. Hmm. All right. And what about you? Did you ever say anything to the police? No. Oh. All right. Were you scared? Yeah. Okay. You never had to testify. That's. No, I don't have enough. I don't, I think you need, like, material evidence, and I don't have anything. I just have what I heard, so... Well, you heard through... Yeah. But it went all the way through the school that these guys were going to get this guy, right? There were, like, three people that heard this, so... What That's really a small happen? school. Okay, so you're wow. having nightmares every night about <laughs> wow. what you heard happened. You, yeah. you didn't see this happen. No. And did, did you just... Is this a guy you just knew from school, or did he grow up near you I, or something? He grew up kind of near me, but I knew him mostly through school. I used to talk to him all the time, though, so. Wow. Okay. Now, are you having nightmares every night, or is this just an occasional? Yeah, thing? every single night. I haven't been able to sleep really. And and it didn't happen for like the first six months, though. No, not really. No. Hmm. Now, how about uh, some counseling and some therapy? I have no idea where to get anything. Well, because you might have a little um, bit of like a post-traumatic stress disorder or something. Post-traumatic stress disorder is something that arises when you experience the traumatic event. Yeah. Uh, suddenly. And yeah, it's an out of the ordinary, uh, well, hugely what, out of the what ordinary. What about your parents, uh, Heather? What about your your mom my and your parents? dad? My parents know, but they don't know what to do about it. Well, well why, why don't you tell them? Look, this is uh, something that's weighing pretty heavily on my mind. I think I need they, to talk they know to someone that, about. But it. Well, has there any? Well, wait a second. Wait a second. This is somebody that wasn't your best friend. I mean, it's upsetting when some when anyone dies. But is there anything else traumatic that's happened to you in the last few weeks or months? <laughs> uh, yeah, quite a lot, but I can't really tell. Okay, well. 
What do you, you mean? mean? What's going on? Uh, yeah, we're having very bad financial problems, and my dad's really sick, so the hospital bills and... Right. Uh, so right. that's what... Yeah. That's what if there's a it. lot of other things going on, that's symbolic of... <clears throat> yeah. she needs to, you need to go see somebody and... Yeah, and deal and, with the whole thing. Uh, maybe through the hospital, by the way. If your well, school really counselor, sick. Or school counselor. Yeah. School counselor can at least show her the way to find out. Talk to someone. That's heavy duty. All right, let's talk to uh, Leanne, who's 18. Leanne? Hello? You're uh, having sex with a 23-year-old guy? Yes. You only had sex with one other guy? Yeah. So what's uh, what's up? Is he your boyfriend? Uh, well, we started dating about three weeks ago. We were kind of just, like, hanging out. And just a few days ago, we started sleeping together. And prior to him, I had only been with one other guy. And it was, like, almost two years ago, because I'm almost 19. Yeah. And so right now, I, I go to school in North Carolina. So I already finished my first year of college. And I'm just kind of back in California for the summer. And mm. so I was never really intending to sleep with him. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I just wanted to go right. out and have fun. And I think well, he knew that. And all right, I told so him you right did. So that, what's you know, the question? I, I, what? What's the question? <laughs> Well, I just, I don't know if I should still sleep with him. Well, is he your boyfriend or not really? Well, we were dating and we never really said like, hey, you're my boyfriend or hey, you're my girlfriend. Yeah. And well, I mean, we well, do you want to be his, do you want to be his girlfriend? Yeah. I don't, I don't really want, I mean, I just don't want to feel like I'm a booty call. That's yeah, all right. Well, then uh, don't have sex with him. So I just, I just shouldn't sleep with him at all anymore? Well, no, I, I just mean have either have a relationship, like you sleep with people you have a relationship with. Yes. So you don't feel like you have a substantial relationship. Well, I don't want to start, like, I don't want a serious relationship. I kind of want... Some um, casual? All I, right, I, I all right, just honest. handies, just handies, just hand jobs. That's it, we <laughs> limited hand jobs. Yeah, that's all. That's a quick <laughs> restart. All right, we got to take a break. <laughs> I can't help everybody. <laughs> Justin Long here tonight. Going to be on Jimmy Kimmel Live tonight in just about uh, oh, eight God. or ten minutes. We'll, uh, yeah, he's going to tell his riveting story. <laughs> we'll take, a, <laughs> we'll take a, a quick break. We'll be right back. Well, that's the show, everybody. Oh, man. Yeah, we could find out when Justin decided he wanted to end, but uh, <laughs> way too, too bad late. we're out of time. Too late for that. It's a couple too weeks late. ago. Yeah, to answer your question. Grin off your face. Yeah, but Corolla. Bruce, better Deeds. question is when did you know that you didn't want to do radio? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, was it yesterday when you showed up nine minutes late to your oh, national man. radio show? Nine minutes. Nine My minutes, national radio show. Nine minutes I'm... late. Was it yesterday when you knew? That's all I'm asking. You waited the whole show to all right, rub right, that you know, in. Uh, rub the there's salt great love. Them. There's, there's great, love. great love. Dr. Bruce doing a great job filling in for Dr. Drew. Drew, if you're listening, don't come back. We don't need you. We found our new guy, and he works for pennies on the dollar. I've had anal sex, and I passed right, out a couple Mike's times. still hot. Still hot. <laughs> signed off yet. Justin Long, dodgeball, everybody. God bless yeah, you. Yeah, thanks great for having me. This was right. fun. You'll come on next time and tell us when you knew you wanted to get in the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, until next time, this is Adam Crowley for Dr. Bruce. Saying mahalo. He, like, wanted me to put a finger in his butt. <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.